Good morning, how are you? This is Deepak and uh, I'm continuing our explorations into the nature of reality. And uh, I thank you for uh, supporting you or the universe, discovering your cosmic self and why it matters. And uh, most of the questions are coming from readers of this book, so thank you for supporting the book. Uh, I should add that uh, in a month, uh, this book is coming out called The Healing Self, uh, a revolutionary new plan to supercharge your immune system and stay well for life. I, you can order it right now if you want, um, and pre-order it, that means, and uh, that'll help uh, create a buzz for me and Dr. Rudy Tansy, and I thank you for that as well. Okay, so today's question, uh, actually our comment, comes from Jet Isabella Thurman. She's a primordial sound meditation teacher and has taken many courses at uh, the Chopra Center, has come to my talks um, in Europe and in New York and elsewhere. And she says, hi Deepak, um, I'm, I think you are lacking in your description of the most important things in life. And then she sends a document and she says, I think you're lacking something very important in your description of happiness, namely love. You can feel uh, love if you love yourself, if you deeply love yourself and another person, normally of the opposite sex, and you both dare to surrender completely to each other. That means you can have loving sex and melt uh, together in soul, mind, body, and spirit. And together you can go deeper and deeper into your bodies and unconscious minds until you become one soul, full of love, knowledge, and bliss. That is to experience the deep loving relationship God probably wanted us to have. This is not a sex for entertainment. If we could experience such relationships, we would create another world without wars, poverty, and illness, with equality between the sexes and happy children around us. For reference, take a look at the beautiful love poems from Rumi, which uh, really describes this love, which contains both the love between humans and the love for God. So thank you very much. Um, uh, Jet for your comments and let me actually uh, uh, share my insights on love uh, right now and the many flavors of love um, but let me go at it from a purely um, spiritual and consciousness point of view and then also uh, bring it to a level of human experience. So this is the way I understand the meaning of love and the different aspects of love based on my understanding of um, Vedic science and based also on my understanding of how the one uh, consciousness which is infinite and dimensionless differentiates into innumerable modes of knowing, innumerable knowers, innumerable objects known. And for the moment, let's say uh, that the one consciousness also differentiates into innumerable lovers, innumerable beloveds, and innumerable modes of loving. The one consciousness differentiates itself into innumerable lovers, innumerable modes of loving, and innumerable beloveds. The lover and beloved originally were one, single one dimensionless infinite consciousness. Only the dimensionless can be infinite. It's important to recognize this because anything that has dimensions is not infinite, it's finite. No matter how big it is, 
it is finite. Only the infinite is dimensionless. And being dimensionless, it can express itself as infinite dimensions too, infinite dimensionalities, infinite uh, frequency domains of dimensionless consciousness expressing themselves as um, relationships, events, and um, uh, persons and sentient beings innumerable in different um, frequency domains because after all, if consciousness is infinite, then it must express itself as maximum diversity. So, the one consciousness differentiates. And then, as it differentiates, it creates the experience of separation. That experience of the separate self is um, the conditioned um, separate ego self and one of the aspects of the conditioned um, ego separate self is called uh, fear. Fear comes from the experience of separation and then the desire to go back to the source is called love. So I know this is a cliche right these days that fear and love are opposites but they are. Fear is the separate self looking at itself as a real entity and looking at the rest of the universe and the rest of all that exists as separate from itself. And so that fearful separate self longs for um, going back to its source where all was um, one, all was one. The nostalgia for oneness is the longing that we call love. The longing that we call love. Love has many, 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 almost infinite um, flavors to it. That's why Rabindranath Tagore said, um, Love is not a mere sentiment. Love is the ultimate uh, truth at the heart of creation. And uh, what is at the heart of creation is one being differentiating itself to infinite minds, all conditioned and all feeling separate. Love is the longing for unity consciousness. Love is the longing for going back to the source. And this, at least under my understanding is, can follow uh, several stages and follow a progression till one is back to the source. One is back to the source. Now, remember, the beautiful poem of T.S. Eliot, We Shall Not Cease From Exploration. And the end of our exploring is to arrive where we started from and know the place for the first time. So what are these stages uh, through which love expands? What are these stages through which love expands? I will elaborate on them in 15 seconds. Thank you so much. So, I was saying I would now uh, expand is uh, on the idea of um, how love expands. And for, um, because Jet asked this question, she always was pertaining to love in human relationships. And so um, uh, this love in human relationships is uh, what I'll expand on right now. But uh, we can, uh, um, we can um, use this understanding for all kinds of love, not just romantic love, 
but love of um, God as well and every other flavor of love in between. Okay, so let's go through these stages of love as understood in the scheme where our goal is to understand the expansion of consciousness till uh, we return to the source of all existence. Um, okay, so uh, we are using romantic love as as our as our template right now. But as I said, you can um, uh, use this understanding for every expression of love. The first stage of love is attraction. And so here is the fundamental principle. Um, we are attracted to those in whom we find traits that we have personally, but we want more of. So if you're attracted to somebody, it's because they have traits that you have, but you want more of. So you like to be in their presence. You like to be in their energy field, their bio field, uh, so that um, you can um, absorb some of that energy. You can, um, um, uh, through osmosis, invite some of that energy into your own being. Similarly, we are actually repelled by people on, in whom we find traits that we deny in ourselves. So if I'm repelled by somebody who is uh, very jealous, who is critical, who is um, sometimes sarcastic, if I'm repelled, emotionally repelled by that person, then of course I must have those traits. Um, maybe not to that extent, but if I'm denying those traits, then that creates in me uh, a resistance to that person. That's why um, the first stage of love um, is, is an expression of the mirror of our souls. Um, those that we love, those that we are um, upset by, are both mirrors of ourselves. And this deeper understanding can lift us to an expansion of consciousness but um, that expansion of consciousness can only occur if we look at um, every experience of attraction and repulsion as, um, uh, as if um, we're looking at a mirror. And so this is the first stage of love. Cheers, I'm going to take a sip of coffee. The second stage of love and I'm translating right now into the experience of human love and human relationships is what in English could be called infatuation. But actually a deeper understanding of that is what is called second attention. So first attention is when you see what everybody else sees. And uh, Second attention is when you see through the eyes of love. And you can look at anything through the eyes of love. If you look at an object, even this coffee cup, with the eyes of love, then it looks beautiful. If you look at another person with the eyes of love, then that person looks beautiful to you. That's called second second attention. And that involves a deeper, um, deeper um, um, listening, which we call attention with the soul, which we also call appreciation, noticing the good things in another person, which we call affection, caring for them. So attention, uh, listening, appreciation, noticing good things, affection, deep caring, and acceptance, not trying to change them. So when people are infatuated with each other, that's how they behave with each other. They say, when you're angry, 
then you usually raise your voice. Angry people shout. Um, when you're basically neutral, then you speak um, in a normal tone. When you start to fall in love, then you whisper. And when you become love, then you're silent. I repeat that. When people are angry, they shout. When they're basically neutral, they speak with a normal voice. When they fall in love, they whisper. And um, when they become love, they are silent. That's second attention, second stage of love. Third stage of love is what we call communion. Communion is only possible when two people look at each other and perceive each other as equal. That's what um, I think Jet was referring to in her comments. Uh, when she was being a little critical of me, she said I didn't address that, so now I'm addressing that. Okay, so communion, which is not communication, communion is connection between souls that occurs when they perceive each other as equal. Uh, when they are honest and transparent and where they have nothing to hide with from each other and um, it's a deeper going into from the level of second attention to direct direct um, uh, inseparability from soul to soul and that communion is not just communication. It is uh, basically being uh, one with the other, and yet not quite there. That's the third stage of love, communion. The fourth stage of love is intimacy. And intimacy is um, total vulnerability, being vulnerable, and allowing the other person to expose their vulnerability. So intimacy with yourself and intimacy with the other. Exposing your vulnerabilities. Exposing your vulnerability and allowing the other the comfort of exposing their vulnerability. It's a poem of Rumi, since uh, uh, since um, Jet mentioned Rumi, and the poem of Rumi says, uh, "If you're not naked by now, go back to sleep." Now he's speaking about intimacy spiritually here, to, in order to be um, intimate with the lover, beloved, God, whoever. You have to be totally naked naked uh, at all levels, body, mind, emotion, spirit. Now, in romantic love, that um, can turn into uh, uh, sexual experience, uh, which um, is um, the elaboration of intimacy. And I have spoken elsewhere about sex and spirituality, so I'm going to skip that uh, now. If you go back on these podcasts, you'll find a whole talk devoted to sex and spirituality. And uh, you can go back to that, okay? So, um, intimacy and sexuality are the fourth stage of love. The fifth stage of love is uh, surrender, even beyond intimacy. And surrender means that you have no desire to seduce, to manipulate, to judge, to label, to uh, control, to, um, um, to approve or disapprove or be approved or disapproved. Just surrender, the settling of the wave into the ocean. Surrender to the mystery of love, fifth stage of love. The sixth stage of love is what is called um, 
passion. Passion is the awakening of the archetypal energies within you. All the archetypal energies, masculine and feminine, within yourself. The great feminine archetypes, mother and power and nourishment and beauty and intuition and nurturing and tenderness and magic and alchemy and transformation and um, you name it, healing. Um, these are the feminine energies and then the masculine energies also of initiative, of responsibility, of conquest of your own demons, this simultaneous welling up of the masculine and feminine archetypes is uh, real passion. What people normally call passion is not passion, it's a transient phase of uh, excitement. But true passion is this expression of archetypal energies, the gods and goddesses within you that have only one desire, and that is um, to be born. And then the final stage of uh, um, love beyond passion is what we call ecstasy. The word ecstasy is very interesting. It comes from the, the word ectasis, ectasis, to step out. Ecstasy is the same as transcendence. And um, there are three levels of this ecstasy. One is physical ecstasy the delight of the senses. Everything appears beautiful. Every sound is music. Every taste, no matter how bitter, is a delight. Every smell, every aroma is sensual. Every sensation is sensual delight of the senses, all the five senses. That's called physical ecstasy. The second level of ecstasy is mythical ecstasy. You have the desire to do great and wondrous things because of love. You're prepared to sacrifice everything in place of love. And so that's called mythical ecstasy. And then the last expression of sacred ecstasy uh, is, yes, sacred ecstasy. So physical ecstasy, mythical ecstasy, sacred ecstasy, direct experience of the divine through human relationship, direct experience of the divine. And so I will end this uh, talk with something that um, I put together after a visit um, to the Dead Sea and noticing some apocryphal Gospels. And this is, um, uh, I'll call this the Divine Lover, a human being who has uh, experienced divine love. And this human being is speaking to the infinite being that we call consciousness. And this is what he or she says. You split me and you tore my heart open and you filled me with love. You poured your spirit into mine. I knew you as I know myself. My eyes are radiant with your light. My ears delight in your music. My nostrils are filled with your fragrance. My face is covered with your dew. You have made me see all things shining. You have made me see all things sacred. You have granted me perfect ease and I have become like paradise. I have become like paradise. Ecstasy. True ecstasy. Okay, so I hope I have uh, answered the question and the comments that were raised by Jet. 
and I hope this is helpful. Thank you very much. Thank you all for being here every day. And uh, thank you for being part of this wonderful community. Be sure to download Jio, our well-being app, Jio, J-I-Y-O. And keep sending your questions and comments to me at info at Jio.com. I-N-F-O at Jio.com. Many people are asking me to repeat the poem I put together after visiting the Dead Sea and looking at some of the Dead Sea Scrolls. So here's the poem. You split me and you tore my heart open and you filled me with love. You poured your spirit into mine. I knew, your, my, I knew yourself. I knew myself and I knew yourself as I know myself. My eyes are radiant with your light. My heart delights in your spirit and your heartbeat. You have granted me perfect ease. And I have become like paradise. I know I skipped a few lines here and there, but you can go back to the original. So, um, thank you very much. And hopefully, I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you, Ramanan. Thank you. Adelaine in Brazil. Thank you, Linda Brown. Thank you, Monica Lampe. Um, thank you, Dee Shields. Yes, the, the place to send your emails is info at jaya.com. Thank you, all wonderful beings. We are um, an integrated ecosystem seeking love so we can return to our source.